Lucena City in Quezon Province is one of the country's busiest fishing and domestic passenger seaports, a gateway to the southern Tagalog and Bicol regions, as well as to nearby island provinces like Marinduque and Palawan. Once called Buenavista by the Spaniards because of its awe-inspiring beauty, it retains much of its countryside charm despite growing urbanization. It is home to the Pasayahan Festival, the carnival-like celebration, during which the streets are filled with colorful floats and street dancers in bright, lavish costumes. During the same time in nearby Lukban, visitors from all over the world come to see the iconic keeping decorations in the homes. Quezonians, in fact, can be said to be very happy people who celebrate all year round from the Tagkawayan Day on January 1 to Sariaya's Belen Festival in December. When one thinks of festivals, one thinks of food. Festivals are traditionally celebrated during harvest time and townspeople are only too happy to share their bounty. Many signature dishes have emerged during these years of festivities. It is a tradition in Lucena and the rest of the Quezon province to open their homes to guests during fiesta time. We will visit some of those homes and sample their heirloom dishes as we go through the day. SM and the Philippine Star takes us on a culinary tour of Lucena and the nearby towns as we explore my city, my SM, my cuisine. My city, my SM, my cuisine. Hi! Magandang hapon po sa kanilang lahat. I am Cora Alvina, your guide to my city, my SM, my cuisine. I am in picturesque Mikasa Hotel, owned by Mayor Don Silang of historic Tayaba City. People with a proud sense of regional identity have brought forth Philippine regional cuisines. Culinary styles evolved among the major regions of the archipelago, the variations traceable to our rich natural resources and to the gustatory tendencies and communal practices of families and communities. Contact with foreigners also flavored native cooking practices. My city, my SM, my cuisine, a joint project of SM and the Philippine Star aims to help us discover our country's rich culinary heritage by identifying, collecting, retrieving, and promoting traditional recipes and culinary techniques. This is food heritage conservation at its best. We're in historic Tayaba City, in the home and kitchen of Ryan Palad with Cora Egamino, who has cooked for the family for the past 40 years. Anong lulutuin natin ngayon? Doña Aurora po, ma'am. Doña Aurora po. Pakikwento uh, lang sa amin, ano-ano ang sangkap at paano ginagawa ang Maria Aurora? Ito po ay itlog na inilaga ng mm -hmm. matigas. Ito Tapos po, ito ay giniling na baboy na iginasalang po. At ito naman pong pag ah, para siya maging maayos ang itsura, ay itutubog po natin siya sa itlog na pinagsama sa counting flour. Ay, tignan po natin, sample po natin kung pa paano ginagawa. Ganito po yan, o. Oh. Isa po ito dito sa mga uh, masasabing uh, tayabasin na lutuin. Opo. Ang ibang mga pamilya, ibang mga bahay ay nagawa rin na rin. Tapos ito ay eh, papaano? Pinitrito po po ito. Pagkatapos natin paglahok-lahok. Pagkatapos po na itong paglahok rin, saka ito pong harina, yung pwede na po siyang magpaint ng mantika. Opo. At tapos, ano po, isasaw-saw na po ito dito. Subukan po kaya natin dito sa nabuo nyo na. Inihalo ang pula? Inihalo po ang pula ng itlog sa egg white. Hindi lang uh, magpusisira ng kaunti ang pagkawa. Maraming stages. First, magpapa maglalaga ng itlog hanggang ganito yung consistency na medyo very firm. Uh, bago noon ay nag ng baboy. 
at nilagyan ng egg yolk doon ang inilakok. Ngayon naman ay nagbati ng egg white ng very stiff, stiff and shiny at inilakok na ang mga egg yolks. Ito po ang mapapansin natin sa mga luto sa bahay, mga luto sa regional um, places. No? Wala hong katiyakan ang recipe. Hindi ko natin nakikita 1 teaspoon of this, 1 cup of this. Napansin po natin si Ate Cora, if I may call you that, no? Na parang sukat na sukat niya kung ano ang lalagay, gano'ng karaming flour ang ilalagay. Oh, Hindi siya gumamit ng measuring spoons. Lahat po nang niluluto ko ay walang recipe. Naku naman. Siguro dapat maituro ninyo para marami hong matuto naman ang masasarap na putahe ng tayabas. As you can see, she, she feels the consistency of uh, what might be considered batter into which uh, the assembled uh, egg itself will be dipped as she says. Kahit anong mantika ko pwede? Pwede na po ba? Okay, egg number one. Kung hindi ko kayo maingat, mapapasok po tayo. Kailangan po magaan ang kamay sa paglalagay na Doña Aurora sa kawali. Anong hindi natansak po? Ano ang, po? Ang mixture po nitong itlog at saka arena ay walang asin, walang pamintay. Wala na po, po ma'am. Ah, wala na? Da dito na rin po siya kumukuha ng lasa. Ah, doon po. At kapag mainit na mainit ang mantika ay... Eh, Mas madali siyang maluto. Opo, no? Kasi luto naman talaga na siya. Luto na yung ibang ingredients. Yung itlog na lang ang luluto. Okay. Okay. Kaya na, kapag luto na rin tayo ng second batch, ito ba ay kinakain pang tanghalian, hapunan, o maari din merienda? Opo, ma'am. Kinapalaman po ito sa... sa ang tawag ko dito ay monay. Ah, nilalagay sa monay ito. Opo. So, isang Doña Aurora, isang monay. Opo. Wala nang ibang inilalahok. Abay, matikman na. Mm. Talagang napakasarap. Maraming salamat po, Ate Cora Egamino. At ipahatid niyo po ang aming pasasalamat sa Palad Family. At kailangan pa kaming mag-move on to the next uh, dish dito sa My City, My SM, My Cuisine. My City, My SM, My Cuisine. Groves and groves of coconut trees mark the rural landscape of Quezon Province, forming part of what has been called the Coconut Belt of Luzon. The coconut for its part has been called the Tree of Life, for indeed many, many things are yielded by it to serve the Filipino in many of its steads. From the leaves, which are woven into roofs, to the fruits, which we eat as is, or pressed as gata, or sweetened as bukayo and many other savories and sweets to the sap, by the way, which is made into the iconic lambanog of the coconut belt region to the roots, which are used for firewood, coconut coir, everything that one needs in life and even in its death, the coconut tree serves a purpose. The trunk is of course used as coco lumber and the heart or its pith or ubud to all of us is used for food. Thus, we have lumpiang ubud and saladang ubud and in some places in the Visayas, a drink called ubud. And now, we will see ubud used in the iconic jardinera of Lukban, Tayabas, and Lucena, made instead of pork with ubud. I'm with Malu Martinez, owner of FNM Restaurant and Catering Services in Lucena City. She will cook for us. Magandang hapon? Ah, magandang hapon po, ma'am. Ano ba ang ipiprepare mo para sa amin? Ah, itong uh, old recipe ng, na ituro ng mother ko, yung hardinera, pero ibang version naman. Bakit po ba hardinera? Nagisnan ko na yung lutong hardinera, yung naituro ng nanay ko. Ah, niluluto ko kasi yan sa lanera, kaya tinawag na hardinera. Pero kalimitan na hardinera ang kinakain ko ay pork. Pero itong iyo ay may variant. Ano ba ang kaibahan? Ang, ang ginamit ko rito ay ubod. Oh. Kasi dito sa Quezon, maraming ubod. 
dahil maraming coconut trees. Yeah, ito yung replaced na yung replacement ng meat na para naman na iiba. Uh -huh. Napakarami palang ingredients ng hardinera talaga. No? Oo, marami talaga. Kaya, uh, kailangan kasing lumabas yung uh, tunay na lasa ng hardinera yung may konting tamis. At simulan na natin ang pag-prepare ng hardinera para makita natin kung paano ginagawa, paano pinaglalahok-lahok itong napakaraming ingredients. O, oh, sige ba? Ang una kong uh, nating ingredients ay itong uh, ubod na kinayat natin ng cubes. Pero, Inilaga ko na ito. Uh, ilagay natin sa bowl. Sige, akong assistant. Okay. We use 3 fourth cups of sweet milk pickles. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sweet um, or dill? Ano po bang nilalagay? Uh, sweet milk. Sweet milk pickles. 3 yeah. fourth cups of uh, pineapple tidbits. Okay. Uh, just one half cup chopped red pimiento. Okay. Tunay na pimiento yun, nasa lata yung yes, red pimiento. Okay. And then two tablespoon raisin. Mm -hmm. uh, one half cup liver spread. Ah, may liver spread pala yan. Yes, Hindi ko alam. Kain ako ng kain. Hindi ko alam na may liver spread. And one cup Vienna sausage. You can use frankfurters kung uh, available. Uh, one, up, one cup luncheon meat. Okay. Uh, one half cup grated cheese. Anong klaseng cheese? Uh, cheddar? Cheddar, ma'am. They mix it together. Okay. Pero hindi everyday food ang hardinera, no? Hindi ho. Pag may mga special occasion, special occasion, occasion like na. fiesta. Ah, kasi nga, pag, kapag fiesta, kapag pahiyas at iba pang fiesta dito sa Quezon ko na titikman ang hardinera. Uh, we set aside the mixture. Okay, so let us set it aside somewhere. Yeah. Meanwhile, we will saute 2 tablespoon butter, 2 teaspoon garlic. Anong gagawin sa garlic? Yung itutusta, iba brown o hanggang ano lang? Yung, yung lang, ano transparent lang. lang. Yes. Maluto lang. Ang, yes, um, ma'am. I put 2 tablespoon uh, white onion. I am using white onion para ho maganda yung blend niya sa kulay ng ubod. Okay. Naka-chop po yan? Yes, ma'am. Mabango na. Dahil sa butter. Iba talaga ang pagbibuto sa butter. And then, we put one cup of ketchup. Ketchup, hindi tomato sauce. Hindi ma. Kasi, ang maasim po kasi ang tomato sauce. Any ketchup po? Yeah. Uh, basta tomato ketchup? Yeah. For myself, I'm using uh, tomato ketchup. This is Del Monte Sweet Blend. Ah, hindi original blend. Oh, yeah. Kasi may asim pa. Kasi mayroon na po tayo kasi yung pickles and pineapple. We put uh, one tablespoon of salt. One teaspoon pepper. Find the ground po ba yung ating black pepper? Yes, ma'am. After this, we put the mixture in our ah, is mixture it of ubod. Okay, clear the place. Cool down. Hindi naman ako. Uh, Iaano pa rin natin. Isi-simmer pa rin. Para lang, ilagay ko lang para mag-blend na mabuti. Okay. Kailangan po ba ang preparasyon nito ay portions for one hardinera, lianera, or pwedeng prepared in a big batch at saka ilalagay sa lianera? Pwede lang kaya lang po ay dapat ay proportionate para ho, yung lasa ay pare-pareho. We put it back in the saucepan Naku. para ho masimmer lang po. Pero yung po mapapansin natin sa pagkain Pilipino, maraming uh, ingredients, Marami yung proseso, pero siguro nga dahil mayroong pag-ibig pag nagluluto. Uh -huh. Then we cook, simmer it for a while in a low fire. 
Meanwhile, we will uh, prepare our... Pwede ko lang itabi ito. Ah, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Sorry. Meanwhile, we're using the lanera. Uh, we will line this with uh, banana leaves. Mm -hmm. And line it with butter. Kaya lang natin nilaligyan ng butter para po pagtataktak ng lanera, buo-buo siya. Room temperature yung butter, no? Almost melted para malambot na malambot. And then, uh, we will decorate it with the boiled egg. Okay. We will put the breadcrumbs. Okay. Saan po? Doon sa mixture? Yes, sa mixture. Okay. Uh, para ho siya yung magbabine. I see. I'm using evaporated milk. Also? Uh, one half cup. Okay. Masustansya, masustansya itong dish na ito. <laughs> may butter, may milk, may egg. Para complete na nga ito. Complete meal. <laughs> May gulay, may meat din. And then, after this, magbabati yung tayo ng itlog. Okay. Uh, ilalagay natin doon sa lanera. Hindi naman nung siya kailangan bating-bati. Basta mag-mix lang yung yolk at yung away. We put a little of salt. Okay. Ah, nauuna yung egg. Aha, nauuna ho yung egg. Akala ko noon, pag naka-set up na sa loob ng Lianera yung mga meats and other ingredients at saka ibang rules. Ready na ho ang ating Lianera. Okay. Na, ilag, na maglalagyan na tayo ng mixture. Uh -huh. Kailangan po siksik na siksik? Oo, oh, kailangan ma. Para po hindi siya pag uh, uh, nesting na natin siya at nilagyan na natin sa isang uh, lalagyan, hindi po siya yung... Magkakrambol. Oo, yung, uh, yung bumabaksa. Hindi po dinadaganan? Hindi naman ma. I-steam na natin siya ng 20 to 30 minutes. Okay. Uh, makikita ko natin na pagluto na yung itlog na nilagay natin sa ilalim uh -huh. kasi kung may ibabaw mo siya, luto na ho yun. Okay. So, indicator din pala yung itlog kapag uh -huh. na, naluto siya, yun ang indication na ready na. Yes, ma'am. Ready na ho ang ating hardinera para steam. Malinam na. Lasang-lasa lahat. From the butter to the egg to the ingredients. At ang kaibahan nga ay light dahil sa ubo. Oh. Congratulations on your variation. Thank you very much. My city, my SM, my cuisine. Here in Lucena City is a restaurant, Luisa and Daughter, which is famous for its Filipino and Asian cuisine. I am with Chuchay Campomanes Marisigan, who owns Luisa and Daughter. I'm the daughter. Oh, is that so? Then how many generations of your family have cooked? I'm already for the, uh, the third generation. And how, and how long have you cooked? But since I was a kid, but officially with the restaurant about 22 years. So you run the restaurants, you make up its menu? Yes. And what are you going to show off today for us? This one is uh, a recipe that I uh, learned from my grandma, passed on to my mother, and then passed on to me. It's actually our local tamales. So it's a third generation tamales? Oh yes, it is, yeah. And it is Lucena tamales? Yes, it is Lucena tamales. Can you tell us a little about it? Well, um, this tamales has a lot of uh, fixings. 
Okay. See, so it's not like the ordi tama ordinary tamales with uh, which is just rice basically. Mm -hmm. um, this would have ham, chicken, pork, and chicharron and peanuts. Oh, yummy chicharron! Yeah. And you know that's why this was passed on because uh, it was a favorite thing to cook before Christmas for Christmas. Because every Christmas you'd have the hokshu ham. Yes. Yeah. And actually, I, I really made sure that I had the hokshu. So my mom said they'd have the ham hanging. Mm -hmm. And then you'd peel some ham there and put it in your tamale also. And you use the bone for your broth, which makes it really good, right? Yes. And of course, the queso de bola only comes every Christmas during those days, diva. Right? Yeah. And so those are two important ingredients for making their my mom's original tamales. <laughs> I don't know if the original tamales in Mexico have chicharron. I don't think so. I think the chicharron was put around the, it the, rather than in it. The tamales of uh, Mexico, they're more common to them is the corn. Yeah, be, yeah, because I think when the Mexicans came with the galleon trade, they missed some of their food. This is my own theory. Uh -huh. And then they found rice. Of course, there was no corn. They had not brought corn over. The Mexicans right. brought corn to the Philippines. Nowadays, I do already. <laughs> but before, I don't know. They'll say, takal, which is, tila takal, di ba? Yeah, or yeah. the approximate. Mm -hmm. But the approximation was also based in the, based on the cooking vessel, I think. Yeah, maybe. That is to taste. Mm -hmm. Because, well, the ham bone will have some flavor. Already. Okay. And the chicharron will also have some flavor. So the, the salt has to be so, a little sparing, right? Because those two ingredients are already salted. You have to stir it constantly, yeah, because it will stay in the bottom. Right. Okay. It's way more intensive. It is. It's not one of those things that you let sit and it will cook itself. Right. Actually, but you measure the bar and then put the pan. That's ready. ready. Okay. I can smell the chicharron. So this is done. What do you want to say? Stay with it. Okay. Now I'm going to do the white. Again, this has to be stirred constantly. Mm -hmm. Pepper, some salt. It's really white, it's purely white, and so you can see the combination of colors. People will look for it. Oh, that's very simple. How utilitarian. A banana leaf is very useful. And then we put some our hokshu ham, which is ordinary ham, a slice of our tempo, a slice of chicken. Let's be generous. Sure. Some boiled egg, it's pretty. And cheese over there. And we're gonna wrap this. And you said you did away with the string or with the I tying? I did away with the tying and with doubling the, the banana. Okay. But 
This is traditionally double. Okay. Tidy the string. All right. And then you steam it for at least 30 minutes. 30 minutes. And this one can last in the rift refrigerator and chiller for a week or you can even freeze it. And how how if you how freeze much? it you could it could stay for a month. Ah, okay. And then when you uh, take it out of the freezer it's okay. and then you steam that for at least 30 minutes. 30 minutes. How do you know it's done? All the re the ingredients are cooked anyway. So it's okay. like just trying to melt down the cheese and okay. the flavors of the, the hot chew ham blend with everything. Right. tamales and the procedure that goes into making it, I have more respect for the tamales now. That's good. That's good. <laughs> it is really delicious and I would like to congratulate you. Thank you very much. For keeping the tamales recipe and for promoting it and for making sure that the tamales lives on in your kitchen. Yeah. I hope the younger generation will be the Well, with the effort that we're doing, I think we will be successful. Thank you very much. Thank you very yeah, much try. also. <laughs>
Then we'll add the liver. Is that pork liver? Beef liver? It's pork liver. Okay. We'll put the pepper to taste. Yes, add it to the meat. Some cities and regions in the Philippines certainly have absorbed a lot of the food of visitors from different, from country, different yeah. parts of the world. Of the world. And I think looking at the cuisine, especially here in Indusena, there's a lot of Chinese influence. A lot of Chinese, that's right, you're right. This this used to be called chow mein, chow mein. Mm -hmm. See, that's why it became chow mein. From what I heard, now we put the broth, it's pork broth. Has to be pork broth. It has to be pork broth. It has to be made from scratch, I understand. Mm -hmm. You have to boil your own have pork. have to boil your own pork. Okay. okay. I'll put the soy sauce. Okay. We'll cover it a little bit. Okay. okay. But you know, there are different types of chami actually. It's not, you know, it depends on people's taste. Okay. You know? They have one that's really fun. It's called Binalipang Sapoyo. Ouch! <laughs> <laughs> right? And then you have the Tamis mm -hmm. which you put a little chili in it. Okay. Well, this is about tea. Okay. Okay, now we'll put our chicken powder. Okay. Now we have the shrimp powder. We'll put a little sugar. Okay. Okay, vegetables. We'll put the chicharron first. Mm -hmm. Okay, a little chicharron. Sayori. Carrots. And usual, the sayote lands in a uh -huh. oil dish. And of course, cabbage. Okay, now I'll take just part of, you know, very little vegetables because I'm going to use it for the topping. Okay. Uh, but I, you have drama naman. Alright. <laughs> okay, just a little. Okay. See? Okay, now we're going to put the fabulous Mickey. Here we go. Mm. It is uh, not very difficult to cook it. No. Uh -huh. See? That's why I told you it's fast. If you have a guest, you know, that you didn't know, suddenly you have visitors, chami is the easiest way, you know, to serve them. They'll enjoy it, they will love it. Ooh. It looks like a bit like the Beijing birthday noodles that I had. Mm. <laughs> Long life! Okay, now I'll cover for a while, we'll okay. let it sim a little bit. There you go. Okay, now I think it's ready. Whoa. Oh, it's ready. Look at that. Mm. Oh, it smells good. Look at the color. Mm. Tastes, I can smell it. Smells it. good. It smells very good and I'm, I'm sure, sure it, it will tastes taste good. <laughs> okay, let's go for that. My city, my SM, my cuisine. Thank you, James, Chuchai, and Malu and Cora, and of course, Mayor Dondi, for a most interesting culinary tour of Lucena and the environs here in Quezon Province. We hope you enjoyed the food and the wonderful heritage recipes. In behalf of SM, I'd like to thank you for joining us in my city, my SM, my cuisine in Lucena. And we hope to see you next month in Cavites, my city, my SM, my cuisine.
My city, my essence, my cuisine.